Hey guys, welcome back to Seller Sessions. We did it, day 60, 60 in a row. With me today is your buddy, Steve Simonson. Norm with the biggest beard in the game. Tim Jordan, please stand up. I'm sure you've got no trousers on. And Leon <laughs> Hirschkorn, who never tends to sleep. The, bald had a the baldest guy in the game. You had a trim. <laughs> Lee Ryan, you had a trim. No, no, I, I need a new trim. You that's need a new trim. That's why I got the hat, because the, the, today I look like the old man bald guy, not the cool guy. With the ah, guy. okay, yeah, so yeah, I got, yeah. I, gotta I, get didn't know if you, I didn't know if you were growing that back as part of the new look. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, welcome back, guys. Lots of amazing comments. Thank you for those this morning. Um, let's quickly go around the room. I'm going to share out to the groups. Starting with you, Steve. Mini intro. A lot of people know you are. I want to also thank all of you guys, plus every guest in the last 60 days, for keep coming back and helping me do this on a daily yeah, basis. I gotta, I gotta this. this can't be done without people being on the show interacting with me. I can't stand in front of the camera and stand there for an hour and just talk every day. It requires interaction with others. So you guys, although it's on my platform and I turn it on at 4 p.m. every day, it's oh, down to guys oh, like you. All of you guys make it, make it make it all the difference. So I want to say a massive thank you there. So sorry, Steve, go on. No problem. Uh, and thank you. Uh, and I, let me be the first to wish Danny a happiest 60th birthday, everybody. Uh, yes, and, thank you. and can I just say that you don't look a day over 55 to me, honestly. Uh, I, I tell you what, when, when I wake up in the morning, I'm see, I'm celebrating today. I've got the Jack Daniels here. So I thought we'd do a bit of a mixture of drink tramps. I know you don't really drink, Steve, but um, yeah. I, I, just got, I, got alcohol. I got alcohol, too. You got there alcohol. You go. Yeah, help. that's Excellent. the wrong uh, wrong idea. So while uh, Dan is getting set up there, I just want to say again that uh, I'm pleased to be here. Glad uh, to be part of your 60th, uh, we'll call it birthday, and yeah. uh, that you know everything that you're doing, we all appreciate it. I know that so many entrepreneurs out there appreciate it. Uh, I'm an old e-commerce guy. Been doing it a, a couple of days, and uh, one day I hope to make my first sale. So that's my intro. Uh, Norm, <laughs> let me kick it over to you. Well, but, but oh, thank Steve, you. Steve, what's your profit margin? Uh, well, I don't, I think revenue is all we care about, right? So I'm just looking for those <laughs> top line dust. Cool. Uh, well, well, happy Norm. birthday. No, are we going on your course soon? What's that? Are we going on your course soon? You got a course, and yeah, you started a new course for entrepreneurs. Uh, the new course for entrepreneurs? Yeah. I'm sure if uh, I can do it. Uh, I'm pretty sure Danny's been hey. drinking for a while. <laughs> no, 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 no. Honestly, honestly, this is, uh, this, this, this is the first one. <laughs> this but is by the first end, one. This is the first one, but by the yeah. end of the show, I'm sure I'll be pissed, yeah. <laughs> this is my 12. Okay. <laughs> yes. So, Sorry, yeah, go on. So, anyways, yeah, happy 60th. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Um, so where is the course, Norm? I don't know what you're talking about. I know. Boys. I'm just winding you up. <laughs> I'm just you up. Tim, over to you. Stand up. Do you have any trousers on today? I, well, no I'm chance. just going to leave it a mystery. There is no <laughs> chance. Because the truth is, if I am wearing trousers, the people that want me to not be are going to be disappointed. And if yeah. I'm not, the rest of you are all going to be massively, horribly disappointed. So yeah. let's just leave it a guess. Are we? Is that the same room with the shelves on the piss that you built a couple of weeks ago? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Can you tilt the camera and show everyone the shelf? Adding. I can't. I actually can't show you right now. Okay. All right. I That's can't. why trousers have... are hanging. So, 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 no, something, something is going on back here that I can't release yet. But you'll know it next week. Well, I hope you, that, that sounds a bit rude. And the haircut. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't mean to be rude. It's just, tell, it's tell, tell, us it about, tell, tell us about the haircut again. Well, have it, you had it done? Well, because it doesn't look, it looks like you've had it done again. If I'm honest with you. No, it, it's starting to turn like Chia Pet again. It's starting to stick out on the sides. Okay. I'm, I'm about ready for another trim. No? Okay. A hundred dollar trim. <laughs> hundred dollar oh, Here we go. Here we go again. <laughs> here we go. Cool. Leave in. Uh, well, I, I want to say, uh, kind of like Steve said, it's pretty amazing you've gone 60 days straight. Um, I don't think there's anything I've done for 60 days straight. Uh, yeah. So pretty <laughs> pretty amazing. The, the consistency is really, really good. Uh, happy to be here, and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's uh, add some value to the people watching because you know, it's just four minutes of nonsense so far. <laughs> yeah, it's been four yeah. minutes of nonsense. Right? Okay. What would you guys like to talk about? Basically, we've done sixty shows. It's been the highs and lows of the last sixty days through COVID, etc. Should we? What would you like to? Do you want to take a little look back on on some of the things that have happened over the last sixty days? We've seen a lot of changes, haven't we, within the industry? 
Liren, starting with you, yeah. name some of the changes we've seen. Well, I mean, uh, I think what we what we're going to have out of this is a uh, a new a new normal for uh, a new normal and a change of consumer behavior that's going to stick. So yeah. I'm sure that if you, I'm sure as a consumer yourself, you have done some things differently over the last 60 days that you're going to keep. I have been ordering from Costco delivery of my groceries. I am going to stay with that behavior because like it's a lot more convenient than having to go out and like wait on lines at Costco, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's going to change. People on Amazon who have, have never been prime customers, uh, maybe they even hated Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. They said, I don't want to buy on Amazon. I'm going, I'm going to Whole Foods or I'm going to brick and mortar stores um, like suddenly kind of needed Amazon, right? Yeah. So, so Amazon's prime customer base is growing. I think people buying products in categories they never bought before, right? Like yeast is the number one product in grocery, okay? People never bought yeast before on Amazon are buying yeast on Amazon. So I think what's happening is there's a acceleration of e-commerce that, that is accelerating it and accelerating Amazon uh, five, 10 years out, who knows, right? Like there's, there's a massive change and, and obviously COVID is bad, but what it's doing, but what it's doing to an e-commerce, uh, we've seen J. Crew go out of business. We've seen Neiman Marcus closing stores, right? Like what it's doing is it's, uh, it's accelerating the shift to e-commerce, which presents opportunity for all of us. Um, the pie, the pie is going to grow, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, new sellers can come in and that may be not, that may not make an impact on the, uh, on the side of the actual demand that's going to happen on, on, uh, online. So yeah. that is all super exciting. Obviously not great times for a lot of people. Obviously we've seen a change in the economy. Uh, you could say recession, depression, what's going to change a lot of unemployment, but I think for e-commerce, you could be very thankful that you're in this space if you have the skill set. Um, and there's a variety of opportunities just to, to end quickly. You can do private label. You can reach out to brands who, you know, have never sold online before um, and try to help them sell online. You can buy wholesale, like tremendous amount of opportunities for you to capitalize on your knowledge in this space. Makes sense. Tim, same question to you, mate. You know, one thing that I've noticed over the past 60 days from a seller perspective is things seem to have settled down substantially. I mean, 60 days ago, it was there was some bad stuff going on. And I feel like maybe there was a little bit of overreaction at some, you know, in, in, in some sections and based on just fear and the unknown. And I feel like even sellers have have settled in. Some things have gotten better, like Amazon is now, you know, allowing for the most part unrestricted shipments to come in. Uh, things are being delivered faster. It's not 100% the way it was, but um, I am less stressed out now than I was 60 days and 50 days and 40 days ago. I'll tell you that. It seems like people are adjusting to, of course, the new norm, like Laurent said, and uh, the the sky is not as cloudy and dreary and depressing as it used to be. Now, that may also be because I've quit watching the news completely, but <laughs> from an Amazon seller uh, perspective or an e-commerce seller, things are things are settling down a little bit and continuing to grow, which is really encouraging. Makes sense. Uh, and same to you, Steve. Yeah, I think, you know, the guys have covered, you know, some of the, the broad strokes pretty well, that we are living in a time of change, right? Mm. And by the way, most of us don't like change. Uh, that's just, it's a human condition, right? We we're kind of pre-built to not like change. So I'm just telling you, we don't have a choice. So get on board is uh, fundamentally my message to you uh, and and everybody out there listening. So uh, Leron brought up some interesting points. Behaviors are changing. So you go overstock.com, their sales are exploding. Uh, the home furnishings category are expanding in an already strong base. So this is all online. It's all in a particular categories that are lighting up. And so you're seeing these changes, not just on Amazon, but across the board. And that goes to Leron's uh, broader point about, you know, this is a, this is an e-commerce shift. And so change can be, in fact, good, right? We resist change on some level because the COVID news that uh, Tim was talking about is scary and uncertainty and chaos. And and by the way, nobody knows anything. Let me just be clear. You know, this is uh, my own opinion, but every one of those experts, I could play you back a a cut up clip of them saying, I don't know, I have no idea, the models are different yet, yeah, right? Nobody yeah. knows anything. So if you can just embrace that you don't know anything and they don't know anything and we're all in this together, we just kind of go with the flow. And so, uh, you know, we're gonna be okay, things will be 
you know, normal's maybe the wrong word. Things will get to a point where we'll feel like this is fine. I'm I'm coping. Everything's good. And there's a lot of opportunity. That's the that's the point I would leave people with. Agreed. Yeah. I think so as well. I mean, we look over the last 60 days and I think you get the initial news, how it's breaking down, how you're going to react to things, how you're going to deal with those within your businesses. And then you start to plan forward. And I said to Lee Ren, about six or seven days in the first, once the shit hit the fan, I had a lot of stuff we'll deal with it. And then I just turned around and said to him, look, I'm on offense. This isn't time to go on defense now. This is time to put a stamp down and go forward. And that's what the message I've been trying to get through on the show, and that's what we've all been trying to do as well, is say to people, don't be afraid. See what's out there. Don't let this kind of the news and stuff cloud your judgment. At the end of the day, we're here where we are. We have to deal with where we are. So you might as well make the most of the situation. And the clearer that you think, the more creative you had the opportunity to be. So I know that there's uh, people in, in our industry have been – very much affected because they're not selling the condi uh, the conditioned products for these times. But hopefully through these shows, a lot of these people have been adapting and realizing, okay, I might not sell the right products at the moment, but that time will pass. And then I'll be inventive and be able to do, um, do other things and try new things. And so this is some of the content that we've been doing on here isn't strictly, this is why like Mindset Sunday and stuff plays the important role. So it sets people up to for the week and start to think about everything else. But I think what happens is we all kind of take on board what's going on and it's how you react to it, which is really important. So that's yep. my take on it. Um, again, going forward, we don't have answers. Our PM has said another three weeks or so on lockdown. I think the most important thing is always be planning and doing day by day, day by day, until we know what is really happening. Like what Steve has said is that um, even the experts don't know. But all we can do is keep pushing that ball forward on a daily basis, and I think that's what makes true entrepreneurs. Liran, what are you uh, doing in your business at the moment? To push the uh, the ball forward um, I'm moving forward I'm moving forward with importing products I'm moving I'm moving forward with launching um, yeah. and uh, moving forward in helping sellers um, you know um, I've seen some amazing ma amazing results in sellers from our from our you know Amazon ads agency and like uh, you know people a lot of people are saying things are bad but I mean there's a ton of explosion happening on Amazon and a lot of products like yeah. launch a new product page one in three days, no reviews, you know, $4,000 in sales, like, just like, there's so much demand for so many products right now, you, you would think the sky is falling, but people are buying stuff, people are home. Um, and, and there's like new opportunities to rank and sell because people are out of stock and Amazon has shipping issues, right? There's, there's like a shift in the search results. There's, there's so much happening that if you can, if you can take advantage of some of that opportunity and not react, uh, mm -hmm. Not just sit back, but but be actually aggressive, um, and you know some of it is like taking on some measurable risk. Like, does this stay for six months? What are the products? Mm -hmm. Like, are people going to be homeschooling their kids in the fall? What are some of the products I could think about now to bring? If you were smart, uh, two three months ago, maybe you brought some summer products. I'm thinking right now, my daughter probably even if her camp is on, I may not send her. I'm I'm in New York, so, like it's mm -hmm. bad here. Uh, I may not send her. Like, what is she going to do with that? I'm going to buy a backyard pool. Like, what am, what are the products that I'm going to buy that I'm thinking about that maybe I'll, maybe I'm going to take a little bit of risk and bring those in for the fall right now to mm -hmm. to, to change this behavior to, for this behavior shift. That's the kind of stuff I'm doing in my business, thinking about and you know talking to other other sellers about. It's certainly not time to uh, sit back and do nothing. That it's never it's never a time to sit back and do nothing. But certainly now. We understand this new normal. The country will eventually open back up. Maybe there's a second wave. Maybe there isn't. Like, who knows, right? Like Steve said, nobody knows anything. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think the only things you could do are plan and take action. Plan and take action. Control what you yeah. can control. That's it. And then the world will take care of itself, like it always has done and always will. Tim, bring it over to you. What's? Uh, I think you've probably had a few changes, didn't you, in the beginning? And like you said, it was a... Stop wearing pants. If he stopped wearing pants, yeah, hundred dollar haircuts. Um, what what's happened for you? The the biggest changes you've seen over the last sixty days of what you're implementing into what you're doing. Um, I I I actually had to kind of go back on the advice I was giving at first because when all this happened, I started telling people, "Hey, let's slow down. Let's take a breather. Like, you know, we can't necessarily." Um, 
uh, what's the word? Like, the word. Uh, like uh, translate, uh, translate search term search results. Term results. And, result. I'm getting an echo. And yeah. like, we can't, we can't track this data very well because everything's so crazy. So I was kind of telling people to pump the brakes, let's slow down. And then after a couple weeks, I quickly realized, holy crap, it's not time to slow down. It's time to roll. Yeah. So personally, I'm launching three new products right now. Some of them are even pretty complicated. And I'm even working on uh, a case study that I'm launching something on uh, Indiegogo crowdfunding mm -hmm. and uh, doing free content on that right now. Like, and what we're seeing is as I'm, as I'm working on this project for Indiegogo, I'm stepping off of Amazon and looking more into like just digital marketing space and the Shopify space. And what I've noticed, the Shopify space is actually growing faster than the Amazon space for sellers right now. And now my suspicion is that might not be permanent. I think it's because Amazon is slow to ship a lot of products. I think there is a delay there, but I think people are just spending more times in digital formats, right? So they're scrolling Facebook more, they're going through blogs and they're going on Reddit. Like people are, are spending more time in front of a screen, which isn't necessarily a good thing, but it's good for us, you know, as e-commerce sellers. So the industry is blowing up all over the place. Um, I've been Do you think also because of the uh, Amazon obviously restricting goods, people had to go elsewhere, so the shop patterns change, and I, people thought, right, there is a world outside of Amazon. Let's do a Google search. Yeah. I think yeah. that's part of it, but I also think that it's not necessarily the intent to buy. It's not someone saying, I want to buy this. It's too slow on Amazon. Look, let's look elsewhere. But hmm. I think that digital marketing has become more effective as far as just um, – you know, impromptu purchases, you know, c compulsory purchases because they're spending more time in front of the screen so we can put our ads out there and have them seen more frequently. So um, I guess the short answer is I was a little bit timid at first and it took me a couple weeks to come to the realization that, holy crap, this is this is the time to put the foot on the gas and it's not going to slow down anytime. Like, let's get while the getting's good. And, and I, I think it's also a time, I mean, I bought, I bought a couple of courses like during this time, I think more people are buying actually like courses if you're selling information and, and digital marketing and um, I think it's another great opportunity like people you and an opportunity to build an audience right people are sitting in front of their screen right now all day nobody's traveling nobody's going anywhere you have a like I'm sure your Facebook lives I think I've mentioned this before are getting more views today than they did three months ago yeah. um, because everybody's home nobody's going anywhere there's nothing mm -hmm. nothing else to do but be home in front of your computer for a lot of us or your phone um, and so there's there's a lot of opportunity like in marketing in general right now with captive audiences and you would think you would think people are not spending money but like I know I know uh, I know some guys that have uh, had some very successful very successful core sales uh, better than they've ever had before in the last couple of months yeah. um, you know like Norm for example. <laughs> yeah, you know, well, Joey Mills here says, "What's up, guys? I'm halfway through new Norm's beard through this pandemic." <laughs> That's the new measure of time. It's a hey, Norm beard. <laughs> this is a quarter Norm beard until I see you guys hey, again. Uh, I think Jerry and I have a call with Amazon today. Speaking of which, hey Jerry, I uh, just want to say a few hellos again to Jerry. Uh, Megler's here. Steve's here. Linda is on the call. Jordan's here. Nikki. Steve, Robbie, Messi, Sahal, welcome back. Garrison, Tiff's back, always here. Eric Payne, how you doing, brother? I think most people on the call know Eric. Uh, Cindy Norton's here. Jason's here. Kwasim is here. Lisa, Troy, Louise, Peter, Vincenzo is also here. Michael, Andy, Isabella, hope you're well. Sharon Evan is here also. Lee Chapman, Chris Parr, hope you're well, brother. Johan's here. Pat Taylor, Yao is here daniel and nicola um in the chat here we've got nabil hi guys vincenzo saying hi uh herb says gm which i'm sure means good morning nelia is saying hi guys jerry says my amazon sales are at this time hi thanks to your ppc team Lee Ran Hirschcomb. He's a plant. You plant I would there, say but... Shill. Yeah, That's wait, my... wait. It's <laughs> Jerry Shills, not Mills. Come on, Jerry. <laughs> hold, hold, while I, hold while I take a screenshot, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, let's do a screenshot. <laughs> Elchin says, Hi, gurus. Happy 60th. Thanks for sharing valuable content. Uh, Side B says, 60 day in a row. Danian crew, you are badass. Fuckers. I won't swear because <gasps> Steve's here. Mo bring Foles. the net. Bring you the net. You did say it anyway, by the way. Oh, I'm like, he's <laughs> not going to say. <laughs> I'm not going to say X by saying yeah. X. And then I sneaked it in. Yeah. I wouldn't you know say what? that was a sneak. That was kind of <laughs> yeah. out there. 
I was hoping you weren't going to notice, so just uh, it's an optical illusion. Andrew, many congratulations. I learned loads from these sessions. Really grateful. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Jerry says, always be shilling. <laughs> yeah, see, he, this is the guy I like. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's good. So, Steve, you run uh, quite a sizable operation. What, uh, what's been your learnings over the last 60 days and the changes that you've implemented? Well, first, there's there's a ton of things. I mean, it's been a half a Norm's beard since I've had this kind of chaos in, in my businesses. Uh, but the the reality is there are some of our businesses that are absolutely um, not doing great because mm. most of our customers remain closed. Yeah. Uh, so on the consumer side through, you know, Amazon and so forth, it's probably 50-50. And we've actually bolted on some things that are uh, highly additive to the, the, the value of what we're doing. Mm. We've, you know, gone to the extent of uh, I've called some of my friends that I've known for 30 years and we're, you know, setting up U.S. factories in Wisconsin to make certain products. And we're doing lots of things. So it, half of our, you know, field of uh, opportunity is, is in full advance. The other half is pump the brakes and, you know, uh, hold on until the, this thing passes because we simply don't have the, the support of the, the marketplace. So we're lucky because we have those two halves and, and we're not a hundred percent in, in one of those uh, yeah. that is negative. So yeah, I definitely, I, I can say that, you know, there, there is a sense of foreboding. And when this all started, you know, I started talking about this thing in January. I'm like, something's weird in China. Hmm. Right. And, and it, I still like all the biology and all the experts and lockdown policy, this or that, this is not my job to do. I can't figure that out. Mm. Uh, I, it's clear nobody can figure that out, by the way. What I can tell you is we as entrepreneurs need to figure out what does this mean for our supply chain? What does this mean for buyers? What, you know, what does this mean for the economics uh, both now and the future? These are the big picture questions we need to think about because there is stuff that is broken all over the world when it comes to supply chain. Right? There's opportunity, and I'm, I'm going to – I'll triple down on opportunity, but I want you guys to know it's not easy. There are some complexities out there, and I want you to really think about it and be thoughtful and not just, oh, well, the guy said everything's good and there's opportunity, so you know yeah. I don't have to worry. I'm not saying worry. I'm saying be prudent with your business and put some thought into it. Yeah, don't be cavalier over it. I, as we said, you want to be planning and executing, but you – effectively there's no point in executing unless you've got a solid plan in place so just uh, make sure that you're uh, mindful of what you're doing next um norm what about you you know uh, i've been listening and for me it, i always talk about resilience you know you gotta you, you get kicked between the legs and you gotta get up and as we've been on this podcast i've just noticed that uh, paypal has suspended my account um for fraudulent activity finally <laughs> I, I i've been reporting it for months norm i'm not gonna lie to yeah. you finally <laughs> well thank you thank you Steve. <laughs> it's all those course sales you know that's <laughs> right uh, yeah just falling in i don't know what's happening okay. so um anyways yeah some of the things that i like i took a look at when all this was happening was yeah yeah the first first thought was okay we we'll panic hmm. but then you have to take a look like if you if you just take a look at history with um the great depression more millionaires came out of the great depression than any other time maybe now will be different then you take a look at housing sales in 2008 with subprime everything crashed well people could take an opportunity and buy 10 houses for a hundred thousand bucks you know it, it was it was crazy times and i think this is the same thing panic sets in dust settles in and now you can take opportunity where is the opportunity that's the thing where can you find it so is it putting out a course on entrepreneurs possibly um it could be setting up you know, diversifying your your uh, amazon brands so yeah. hey i sell travel pillows i might have to diversify it might be finding other suppliers like in china when all this was happening you had to turn on the dime and that's the beauty of being an entrepreneur you can turn on a dime we're not those big whales that you know are very slow turners we have to take it and if there is change we have to jump on it so one of the things that uh, we looked at, uh, inventory management. And we talked about this a little earlier on, but you know the way that we're working with our suppliers now, uh, because this happened, it's our normal lot. Let's, I'm just gonna, you know, you're a very quick example. If I'm buying a thousand units, I bring it over, 
I've always put up some into FB or not F FBM, but into our 3PL and then some over to Amazon. Well, luckily now I could switch it over to FBM very quickly. Yeah. You no, know, which, which helped out. So we could, we could show that we had faster uh, turnaround time. But now what we've been able to do is we've been able to go back to our supplier. We've been able to negotiate better terms. So that was a bonus. We were able to double up. And what we said was, okay, look, those thousand units, we want you to put thir uh, another thousand units in stock for us. Just keep them at your warehouse. We'll, put, we'll give you, we'll try for free, but sometimes that doesn't work. And most of the times it doesn't, but here's 30% down, hold on to them for me. And then as they start to move, then you put the new production into place and you'll never run out of inventory. So this has solved the problem for most people for fourth quarter. You know, that, that whole thing about trying to keep the, the, the inventory moving. Well, you can easily do that now. So this is just something new that's come out that we're using and we're talking to our, our like a lot of our clients about and we're talking to them about negotiating. I mean, it's, it's a good time to do it. Don't take advantage, negotiate. Hmm. Um, another th common theme that with us guys as well, we we have spent a lot of time going to events, and this whole lockdown mm. has changed a lot of things. Starting with you, Steve, um, how has it impacted on you and your business by not being able to attend networking events like you have? Because like you'd fly over to the even to seller sessions, you'll come, you know, you like you fly over on your uh, expensive. Um, What's it called? Your upgrade and stuff. And that's a <laughs> nice picture of it. And then Lee ran to get on the plane in the pop, uh, cockpit as Lerard's well. Lerard's flying it. Yeah. 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 Lee Rad's flying it. Steve's yeah, in, yeah. in first class. But no, seriously, <laughs> what is, how, how much has this impacted you in terms of not being able to get out, see entrepreneurs and network with people? Well, for sure. The, the, somebody was asking me the other day, they're like, you know, how, how has this impacted you? I'm like, I landed from Dubai on March 8th and I haven't been on an airplane since then, mm. which by the way, was right near the, the kind of the cutoff uh, yeah. unbeknownst to me at the time. So it is very, very surprising to me that, that I haven't been at places and I had many places scheduled just to be clear, mm. uh, including coming to seller sessions and going to Germany and, and there's a, you know, uh, India and there's a whole series of things, China. Mm. Uh, but honestly, I'm using all that time the, the no matter how uh, aggressive we are, no matter how much we're, you know, trying to grind it away. I, I travel takes time and there, mm -hmm. there's just no getting around that. So we have been completely all hands on deck. I've found the time at home to be quite useful. And although I miss seeing you guys, I miss seeing the entrepreneurs. I don't even know when that's going to return because conferences and these types of things are going to change for a long, long time at hotels and, and things like that. So I, I don't even know when it's going to return. So I miss my people. I do actually get energy from Hmm. You know, seeing you guys and, and hanging out with all the, the great entrepreneurs, uh, that part I miss, but I, I the time has been essential. You know, this very morning, I'm, you know, uh, we'll talk maybe later about the fact that the China supply chain is going to face further pressure. But I'm talking to Portland or uh, Poland, uh, sourcing some stuff, Israel sourcing hmm. some stuff, uh, India tying off some loose ends, both on the tech and sourcing side. And then, of course, I, I still have a bunch of stuff in China, Vietnam and, and Southeast Asia. But the point is the world is changing dramatically and I really needed to be here during that time so I could be 18 hours behind a screen talking to whoever I need to. So it's it's been helpful, but I miss the people. Yeah. Uh, same question to you, Norm, as well. Well, I just want to let you know I got my... my um Account unsuspended. Account back, back unsuspended. Nice. That was quick. Well, that was yeah, real I, fast. I, I did you, use, did you, did you use a prevention company? You pay four grand to get it... <laughs> reinstated or you done it yourself uh some of tim's enforcers yeah okay <laughs> no, i went in i went in and approved it yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thanks <you know. laughs> so uh yeah the networking is definitely affected uh you know what we're doing however um podcasts like this uh we get opportunities to meet new people even on podcasts mm -hmm. the last podcast we had um sharon and uh and Chris were on, and we've been talking back and forth. So we've been able to, to you know, get in touch and, and talk to uh, talk to each other. And even after this, we kind of reach out and you know talk to people. People see us on the podcast and and reach out, and it's great. That's the only form of networking there is right now. Uh, you know, it's it's getting out there and and talking to everybody. Like it, it's great to be able to go out and. It's, 
it's not so much going to the event, it's breaking the bread with people and sitting down yeah. and having a few laughs, you know? Yeah. Um, but in this circumstance, I mean, all we can do is have some fun, talk, and, you know, if people do reach out, you know, try to reach out and talk to them. But yeah, it, it has affected, but there has been um, a few positives too, because there's been a lot more people looking at my LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, and then reaching out and saying, hey, what can you, I didn't know you could do this. And so yeah. that comes out with business as well. Yeah, it's been an interesting dynamic. What about you, Tim, as well? Because you're quite active going to conferences and stuff. I think before it all shut down, you had two or three lined up in Vegas. And so did you, Liran, didn't you? You were booked, you know, I think you had a stand and everything. So. I canceled, uh, I'll let Tim go, but I canceled three yeah. flights in March. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim, yeah, you got. I'm, I'm the same way. I went back and, and looked at my American Airlines stuff and they, have refunded me for like seven digital tickets because between March and April and May, I was supposed to be in Australia, India, China, Hong Kong, like all over the States. The last trip that I was on was actually with you, Danny in London. Hmm. Yeah, so yeah. I got back from London with you at, you know, right at the beginning of February, I may have made one trip to San Fran, but that was a messy <laughs> evening, but that's for another day. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk cool. about that later. Yeah. Um, but it was, um, it, it for me, it was a little bit depressing because I hate, like Steve said, you hate having plans change, hmm. right? And like I had all this stuff lined up and it was like, it didn't all happen at once. Like, boom, it's over, you're done. It's like, wait and see. Okay, we hmm. cut this, wait and see, cut, you know? Like, uh, I, you know, I was doing a workshop at ASD in Vegas and like I had Airbnbs rented for masterminds. I had workshop space rented. I had all these flights and I had all these people that bought tickets for it and I had sponsors and like when everything shuts down, the, you know, the, the, like even getting refunds back, like Airbnb owes me like $6,000 and I may never get it back because they're going under. So like every little small thing was stacking up and it was depressing. But then mm. after a few weeks, I realized, okay, I'm just going to scrap it. Like it's, everything's a loss. Who cares? Like, let's move on. But like what Steve was saying, it's put me in front of the computer and given me more time to focus on other things that I wouldn't have been focusing on. So to be honest, like this whole um, Indiegogo thing probably wouldn't be going as fast as it is now. I've taken time and I'm actually researching and launching more products for myself on Amazon that I wouldn't be going this fast because I was busy doing other stuff. So um, it was a shock. It was kind of depressing. It was a big uh, change. Um, you know, I, I'm depressed because I haven't got to see all those new newsfeed pictures of Laurent sitting in cockpits. Yeah, I mean that like that was part of my everyday life, and now it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> now, 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 it, now it becomes but, an everyday uh, struggle. Yeah, but I, I think it's like one of those you make lemon out of lemonade things. I will say that um, <laughs> that's not actually how it works. Just to be clear, <laughs> yeah. You want some oh, of this uh, you know, Jack Daniels, Tim? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what I you know what I meant. Um, <laughs> yeah. That one thing that I've noticed though is um, there's been a lot more people doing these webinars. Have you guys noticed the webinar fatigue? Yeah. yeah, there's like a few webinars that people are still I've, I've got with 60 like of them and count like, yeah, yeah like yeah. this, like, <laughs> like, this is conversational, but the smooth, polished, like super corporate commercial people are sick of it, because everybody tried to transition to that too fast. Um, yeah. So I, I have noticed that that's been interesting and in, in trying to adapt, like how I put out content, because people are sick of seeing a lot of the same stuff. Yeah, Lee Ren? Yeah, um, you know, kind of uh, what Steve said resonated with me very much because uh, I'm definitely an extrovert, um, although I think I only learned that in the last couple of years. But um, I definitely get energy being around people. I definitely have less energy sitting myself in you know, my office here, uh, staring at the computer. Um, and so I miss that energy. I miss the conferences. I miss the camaraderie, the, the conversations, you know, learning, getting together, like having fun, like with people who are you know, there's like Steve calls them like the normies and the awesomers, right? It's like two different types of people, like the nine to five people and the people that are, you know, entrepreneurial, really changing the world, I think, in a lot of good ways. So uh, I miss I miss a lot of that. Um, it makes me it makes me appreciate these kind of things because it kind of that that's a, it's a level of, of that camaraderie that we can have online. Um, at the same time, I feel like it's also allowed me to really focus. Um, and it's brought like a new level of focus for me. I'm like, okay, like you have nothing else to do. You're not going to any conferences. You're not going to this. Like just like work on your business, sit and work on your business. And, you know, and, and the thing with the webinars is like, yeah, I'm getting offers every day to learn this and learn that and learn that. It's like, I want to learn everything and I want to consume it all at once. But like, you can't, the reality is you can't do that. It's just like focus, you know, spend half an hour a day watching a video or, or reading or like, you know, spend, spend a little bit of time. But like, 
you also don't want to get overwhelmed during this time because like things are coming at you from a lot of direction right now because people realize there's this captive audience right uh i think it's a great time to really focus um and yeah i do i do miss the you know uh you know like my best friends uh are all are all in this space like that's the people i talk to every day that's the people you know i don't really have friends outside of like for the, for the most part people i'm really close with the closest people i'm with are are my family and people in this space yeah, uh, because so, they understand what you do yeah we have a lot in common we you know mm. we we like to talk about the same stuff we you know they understand me like my friends from high school that went out to be a lawyer like it's just like it's not not that much they're friends but there there's a disconnect isn't there? Yeah, you can't get like, the same conversation I, I can get on with you and we can talk for an hour about bullshit and amazon mm. and whatever you know like it's it's a camaraderie so um you know i i miss that part but but i'm also trying to make sure that actually during this time that i reach out to people and mm. that i check in on people right yeah. especially, especially at the beginning of this more than now but like send a text message to a friend that's living in new york city in an apartment by herself you know, hey, how, how are you doing? You know, yeah. how are things going for you? How, how are you really doing? You know, like, you know, because some, some people are having challenging times and reaching out to people and showing that you're there. And like, I keep I keep kind of like a tracking sheet of the things that I want to do every day. Um, mm -hmm. There's like seven things I want to do every day. And if I do three of them, I feel like it's a win. And mm -hmm. one of them is like, reach out to one person, right? Whether it's networking or a friend or whatever, like reach out to one person today, send an email. And actually you can leverage those relationships can be very meaningful and can translate into business, but also like, you know, it's a, it's a good time to do that because people are, you know, isolated. Um, so I think the message for me is like, yeah, it sucks. It sucks not being able to go to events. Uh, I'm glad to have this. I appreciate that. And I've taken, and I've, I've kind of flipped the script to say, okay, well now I get to focus and turn, uh, turn, uh, turning a, a lemonade into a lemon as, as Vince says. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Um, so what do you think is the, the way forward now if, if we, we've, we're operating in kind of a new world, right? So we know that going to the events and doing them online, that, that you can't replace the dynamics of being with someone or a few people, 10, 11 o'clock at night, wherever it may be, and making meaningful relationships is very difficult to do that with like online events and stuff but is there a hybrid in place do you think is there going to be technology where you can go to these virtual events and you can network can can you see that working is there a way forward um starting with steve you're not in your head so i oh, imagine you've got a point on this i was just trying to pretend like i was paying attention the reality is uh there are these types of platforms coming in fact uh, yeah. i know that melissa's working on one that that yeah. is kind of more event driven you know so it's mm -hmm. kind of like a trade show event you can mm -hmm. do breakout meetings you can do kind of one-on-one -on -one speed dating kind of ideas so this will evolve uh, i i thought you know with the the gang here, I, I don't think you joined us, Danny, but the rest of the guys here were on with a game night. And we had a fun, really oh, fun game that. night where there's a lot of laughs. It was, uh, I mean, we saw true personalities come out, uh, Tim. Uh, oh, you mean the, you need the was, personality of I whipped everybody's tail? So like Yeah, the one who was the most uh, most uh, apt to trick us. Yeah, so yeah. well done. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you anyway. can word it how you want to. Winner, liar, <laughs> whatever. Tim can had the most him? black hat yeah. tactics. <laughs> uh, anyway, the point is there are things that will change and evolve. And also there will be a time, you know, I, I can imagine there's going to be a lot of things happening that are outside, right? You know, and, and although this may be hard to imagine right at this moment, but there, there is going to be events that they just put up big tents kind of outside um, and, and, and they let us go, you know, do stuff again. Yeah. It's going to have to change, but – it doesn't mean it's for the worse. It just means it's different. And uh, mm -hmm. both things can be true at once. It can be fine and it can be different and, without it being bad. You, like you think, you just, sorry, go on, you go. I'm just saying, when you think about the greater picture, right? Like we're all in this here, but let's zoom out of your life and, and you look at the, at the line of your life, right? Wherever you are in that, in that line, this is a small blip, like in a year or, I mean, there's going to be a vaccine, right? There'll be a solution. Like, Maybe there'll be another pandemic in the future. Hopefully this makes us actually a lot more prepared to, to deal with that. I think, the, I think the government has done a poor job kind of preparing for this. But in the scheme of the long line of picture, and if you zoom out, this will be a, this will be a small blip. We will absolutely remember it. But 18 months from now, or at, at a certain point, 
things will get back to normal. It's a matter of time. And I think having that perspective and knowing like short term shift, got to do things differently for a little bit of time. Mm. And there will be a there's a new normal, but there's going to be a there's going to be a back to normal. Uh, you know, people are already getting like fed up with this, like being at home and, and all this mm. stuff. Right. They're already going to the beaches and like doing the stuff they want to do. You want to get a sense of normalcy back to mm going to restaurants and seeing people. So I think it'll return. I think it's just the perspective is short term shift in the scheme of your life. Um, things will get back to normal. Yeah. Let me going back to Steve's point about um, the behavior changes from outside and what you're talking about Melissa as well. I spoke to our PR company today. They do lots, what, what are called activations and installations. They do a lot of festival stuff as well. And some of the things they're working on at the moment for the future is having, and you probably got this in, in the US as well, uh, the drive-in movie screens. So you go in, but they were doing them to have parties. So someone would be driving, but you party with inside of your car. So the music's playing and we've got it all set up like that so that you can go into a space, but in a controlled environment, i.e. your car and stuff. So they're setting up safety for that, preparing for the road back to be able to put on these larger scale events. So it's going to be quite interesting. Imagine you're going to see this on Amazon, uh, that these people got like these clear plastic, like Wendy houses that you put over you. And we're all walking around these conferences with inside of these bags. But um, yeah, it's going to be He's going to source that right now. What's that? Yeah, I already have those sourced, believe me. Uh, <laughs> we've got every kind of uh, ridiculous uh, barrier between people. That, that part I do not look forward to. This, like, uh, you know, I'm not going to get into a whole uh, uh, rant here, maybe a, a half a rant, but the, the idea, like, <laughs> I do not like wearing it. masks. Um, yeah. I, turns out I didn't expect to be in the mask business, but I bought a dental supply company. And now we, you know, I buy a million dollars worth of PPE a week. Uh, it's turned into a thing. Wow, so just, even as I yeah. sell this stuff, I hate wearing masks. Mm. The, the idea that Delta says I have to wear a mask is like, guess what? Yeah, I'm not flying. All right. I have no interest. I mean, how are we going to eat our peanuts wearing masks? Uh, I've yeah. got a whole thing worked out. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> He's got peanuts as well. Yeah, go It's on. a conveyor belt. Don't yeah. worry. It's a it's a known problem. But... This is positive pressure ventilation. And... Yeah, I just don't want to be I, like, I don't like that feeling. I, I don't yeah. right now I have to wire money constantly uh, to, to China before they ship stuff, by the way. So normally I talk about getting terms. Well, there's no terms on PPE for mm. the best of us. And uh, so I have to go in the bank. I got to put on the mask and I just don't like that. So I'm, I look forward to a day where we don't see all of each other as kind of biological weapons, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> but I, I, I definitely know that it's reasonable to have a period of, you know, let's let's uh, hunker down and let's let's be careful of each other, too. So I, I'm OK with it. I just hope it doesn't last forever. Yeah, I mean, when do you think the first run of events will start to to show up and people will have? Because obviously, there's no insurance against COVID nineteen. You can't get covered for it. So that's going to be interesting when this is going to happen. I mean, it's going to happen differently in each territory. But you are you seeing the way back that there'll be smaller groups, then they'll expand them out. I mean, Norm, what's your opinion on this? I think it's going to take some time. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to have to adapt. Look what we're doing with travel. You know, since 2001, right? We, yeah. We've had to adapt. Um, it's got loose. It's looser and looser and looser and, and probably still get a little bit more loose. But, um, yeah, I think the, they're going to come out. They're going to be smaller events. Uh, then it might grow. Um, I, I mean, I, I have heard of events that have not been canceled, that mm. they still plan on going full steam ahead. I mm. don't know how that's going to look. And that's, that's J July, August, September. Yeah. I'm sure they're going to be cancelled, but mm -hmm. um, who knows? Well, I, I think I don't know if if Celicon's made an announcement either way yet. Have they? I haven't heard. I, I, yeah. I thought early on I, I heard that the I thought they were going to uh, cancel mm. it, but no, I don't have any confirmation on that. I don't know about the official uh, if it's official in terms of being cancelled, but I was speaking at Affiliate World in Barcelona. That's in July, a week after Celicon, but. Yeah. Yeah, from my understanding, that has been postponed for now. But because um, obviously there's, there's big issues in Spain that we've had. But yeah, mm. it'd be interesting to see how this kind of un unfolds. You know, we've got seller sessions booked for the 25th of July. Now we, our MP, will have conversations the beginning of June, and then we're going to have to address it from there of where we go. You know, mm. but for me, it's safety first. Right. Uh, but for me personally, I loathed 
to turn that onto an online event because I think for me it's about the experience. It's not just about the content. It's about the people. It's about the after parties. It's about there's, having fun and everything. There's there's, there, there's never going to be the same. Like you can't. There's there's nothing you can trade for a face to face trust relationship. Having a beer and sitting down and talking to somebody, right? Like like you can meet. You know, Amazon sellers as an example, right? Uh, they're very protective over their private label product and what they sell, blah, blah, blah. But, and they won't tell anyone, but you can meet someone in an event and five minutes later, you're going to tell them everything about your business because like you just formed a relationship and, you know, and like you, there's a sense of trust and it, it's just different. You know, there, there's to me like Zoom can help a lot. And, and probably in this time, people realize they've done a lot of unnecessary travel. They could have just done Zoom and probably gotten a lot of stuff done. Mm. Uh, and I think. I think that will be a new normal in some sense, like corporations, people who spent money on travel and time and, and effort will just say, hey, like Zoom and companies that, you know, maybe are going to start operating more people working from home going forward then coming back to the office and all this stuff. And there's going to be changes. But there's also there's also a certain level of collaboration and trust and relationship that cannot be traded for other than for face to face relationship mm-hmm. building. And I think that's what you kind of mean, right? Like. It's not just the presentation at seller sessions. It's what happens at after six, at six o'clock when people go out to dinner and have a drink together. Oh, and six o'clock in the morning where we're sitting there watching the boxing tethered yes. on a laptop oh, in a yeah. restaurant. Yeah. Yes, I, I remember that. For me, that that is it's about experiences. It's memories. Do you know what I mean? As we get older, it's not just about money and everything else. It is about setting up for memories. We're here for a good time as as well, hopefully for a long time. I mean, Norm's beard, you know, in person and on Zoom. <laughs> Totally <laughs> I've been done here. Look, happy 60th birthday in the background. Thank you. I just oh, want wow. to remind everybody that it's and uh, <laughs> that our dear leaders' uh, 60th birthday is happening today. And again, I want to reiterate: you don't look a day over 55 to me, buddy. Thank you, mate. I'll probably when I wake up with this hangover tomorrow. But yeah, I'll probably feel 60 in the morning. Um, right, where are we going to go next? We've got about 15 minutes left. I would like I, to I ask do have you a comment, Tom. Danny. Um, one of the things I just thought of is. Uh, there's a bigger job pool out there. Hmm. So the ability to go out and find a really great person, copywriter, somebody, you know, it it could be that person that's lost their job. They're sitting at home. They're looking for extra income. And we've been able to, like on the content writing side, we've been able to uh, find some really great writers that, Hmm. um, you know, we would never have had a chance to to go out and, and talk to before. So yeah. and that's that's a real positive that there's so many people there willing to work. Mm-hmm. Um, and for us, like in the U.S. or in Canada, uh, taking this pool rather than having to go overseas and work in your own time zone. Yeah, no, that definitely makes sense. Has anyone employed anyone recently into their team? I imagine you have, Steve. But have, have you, Tim? And what about you, Lee Ran, on the agency side? What's the, what's the question? So have you employed any new staff over the last few weeks? Whereas uh, most people are furloughing and letting their staff go, have you actually grown? Um, I've I've increased some hours, yes, on existing on a, a, our existing team. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I expect uh, I'm actually going to be putting in the next uh, in the next couple of months a lot more focus on it and, and growing. I, I think there's a good opportunity there. So, um, um, so the answer is I think there will be, but um, I have increased sort of a uh, freelance hours. So to yeah. speak, in the business. Makes sense. What about you, Tim? Yeah, I've, <clears throat> I've hired uh, two employees in the past two months and interviewed another full time one yesterday. Excellent. And localized or overseas? Uh, two overseas and one localized. Cool. Yeah, I think that's good. You know, the idea that I know you guys know uh, Michelle Venton, right? Very mm-hmm. successful entrepreneur. One of the things that she done from the very beginning, she always tends to do things her own way. It wasn't about, you know, her business is about the branding, growing the brand, not about hacks or anything else. And one of the key things she's always done is when she employs staff, she doesn't go overseas. She looks for mothers that have worked in corporate jobs, very smart, wants to earn some money, wants to be able to stay at home as well with, and raise their children, but get really good expertise but at a good fair rate that she can afford without having to go overseas. So I thought that was quite interesting as well in terms of that. And I agree. I think over a period of time, we're going to see more and more of that as more talent becomes available and they can work from home and they don't have to travel costs and et cetera. They may be able to adjust their wages, which is more affordable 
to work on one of our teams. So, all true. Um, okay, so going forward, Steve, what are your predictions now for the remainder of 2020? What would you like to see and what do you think will happen? Well, I, as I started, uh, since we're not in control of what I want to see or what I'd like to see, probably not hmm. so relevant. Um, what I expect okay. to see is, includes things from, uh, you know, I think the, the supply chain is broken. Uh, the air shipments are broken. There are hmm. food issues uh, you know, in the United States where farmers don't have enough business, so they're plowing their crops right back into the field. There's dairy guys dumping the milk out. There are some unintended consequences of all these lockdowns that are going to uh, be problematic. So my advice or we're preparing for, uh, you know, unemployment, uncertainty, economic upheaval. And, uh, and I do think that that's going to be generally mild in Western you know, uh, countries that are, are more, you know, kind of developed. It's the third world countries that, that are going to suffer the, the brunt of these types of things. That trickle down effect will not be pretty. So I also think there's going to be extraordinary um, China breaking the chain pressure. I, I think, you know, the version one or phase one of this trade war is, is only a precursor to what's coming. So I would recommend that people really focus it doesn't mean you have to leave China or, or it just means you should know your options and you should make sure that you understand the market price of your product. And uh, my general advice on that is stop thinking that you're best friends with your, your factory and that you have the, some unique relationship that nobody in the world's ever had before. Steve, it's all a ruse. Steve, I have a question for you. I heard um, I did a presentation um, maybe a month or so ago. And there was another speaker and he had a sourcing company and he had he was from israel and he had people on the ground in china and he had like a warning call for for sellers and the warning call was um you know the economy is not doing great in china and even your he, he said even yo yo your friend you know might be suffering you know and you got to be careful on your payments to suppliers even ones where you have a good relationship with if they're a small factory they could be going out of business and maybe taking that deposit and running or whatever like do you find that to be like the case? How should you handle? Should you handle things differently? Is is it is it reality? Should you be concerned about your supply relationships or sending money over now differently than you were three months ago? I know there, there's there's mechanisms like Alibaba trade assurance, but not every seller works through works through that. They generally wire the deposit. And um, what are you know? Should sellers be concerned? What are the things you could do to protect yourself? Um, uh, I, I would think you would be the the expert on that answer. So uh, the unfortunately, that's a that's a a whole topic on its own. We've we yeah. have talked about. It. I'm not sure if it was on one of our dual casts here or not. But yes, on on standard kind of supply chain stuff, you should mitigate your risk, reduce that risk, figure out pre inspections or other types of inspections for raw materials, etc. That that will rationalize payments, right? If you send money and you can't verify raw materials, maybe that's a, a risk that is not worth taking. And it depends on the scale of the order. But the quick answer is regular supply chain stuff, be extra careful. PPE, as I said, you know, everybody just going to have to roll the dice and do your best. We are lucky because we have people on the ground. But you can actually get better terms from regular supply chain, as Norm talked about earlier today. Uh, so ask and and be thoughtful about it. And there's lots of content that we put out there and, and others as well. Makes sense. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, Tim, I've muted your mic. Sorry. Uh, let's get you back in. Apologies. Here we go. It's I so peaceful. You muted me because you thought that was me dinging and now you figured out it wasn't even me. No, no, no. It's just, it's can me. you hear that? Listen, listen to it. Can you hear that noise? And there it stops. All that background yeah. noise. Yeah? yeah. Sorry, being a former audio engineer, that was driving me absolutely bonkers. I don't, now, I don't hear anything. It may no, be that AC unit. Yeah, it probably is. And you're not wearing cans, are you? Um, no, so your predictions like, for... Yeah. Oh, you are? Okay. So He's not wearing pants. Not, not, He's not pants. pants. Yeah. He's not the cans, not, not the pants. <laughs> <laughs> what is uh, your predictions for the remainder of the year? Like, uh, what do you think will happen and what would you like to see? You know, I would like to see everything get back to normal. I'd like to see supply chains get back to normal. I'd like to see kids go back to school. Like, But, you know, um, what I want probably isn't going to happen. 
Um, you know, we talk a lot about Amazon selling or we talk a lot about e-commerce and sometimes we don't talk a lot about life. And right mm. now, life for me is changing pretty significantly. Um, you know, I've got three little kids and we're trying to cope with the, the you know, what has been a short term, like, what do we do with our kids? There's no school. Like, we don't mm. want to send to daycare because daycares are closed. But, you know, my wife is a nurse and, you know, I'm working. I can't work from home because I'm, you know, have three little kids. So like we've got a nanny, but now they're even talking about not letting the kids go back to school in the fall. Mm. And like, I'm in, I'll be honest, I'm in panic mode. I'm like, what the, like, not only like, how are we going to take care of our kids, but we're going to drive ourselves crazy. Like someone's going to, to get hurt because we're all like got cabin fever and like the kids aren't getting educated. So does my wife stop working mm. to start homeschooling? And then she'll kill me because she'll be so annoyed every day when, she, when I come home. So yeah. I know we're trying to figure that out. Um, I know so many businesses that have had a short-term hurdle that they can probably get over. Like one of them is Emerald Expo. You know, Emerald Expo owns ASD, they own uh, Prosper, and they run like 250 trade shows in the U.S. every year. Hmm. Like, I like I've been messaging like one of the one of my friends that works for them, and she's like, Tim, I I don't know if we're going to survive this. Hmm. Like. You know, so so every week that I see that these things are stretched out, I get a little bit more and more anxious for what's going to happen. I'm seeing restaurants opening in Alabama, at least, and nobody's going to them like nobody's going. So um, I I they're still scared, probably. Yeah, no, it's, still it's scared. definitely live in Alabama. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and people are confused about like, well, what are the social distancing regulations or do I have to wear a mask or is it just the staff that wears a mask like hmm. I don't know. I'm I, e-commerce is looking up for me and I'm extremely excited. Q4 is going to be the most freaking ridiculous thing anybody's ever seen because everybody that was going to brick and mortar to buy gifts, they're not anymore. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I'm concerned about general life, you know, and, and Tim, especially like malls, right? As far as yes. crowd, crowded places, Dude, they're like, done. You can they're have done. a single store that like where people shop for supermarket stuff and they can, they can sort of measure and control. And then you have a mall, which is like totally, totally different. So it's a great point. Yeah. Mm. So we'll see. It's going to be interesting. Um, but do you also think that one, because you mentioned cabin fever, going back to the point about events and stuff, obviously they're going to try and uh, put a bit of a hold on us. But I think once people say, right, you can leave your house, everyone's going to go mental and never want to be back home again. So we could have this spring back where everyone's going out and buying tickets for events and doing all these things on the flip side. Right. Cause they're like, I'm so tired of being at home. I'm almost, I put aside my concerns about a reoccurrence of this virus. Cause I just need to get out. I need to do things. I need to see different people. I'm just wondering how that would kind of um, kick into play, taking that to norm. What do you think? Sorry. I was just looking at my son coming in, not my wife. Yeah. Uh, anyways, yeah, uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen, uh, you know, with a, a possible reoccurrence or ga uh, crowds gathering. I know one thing, you will never, ever see me foot tap. That will not happen. Hmm. I don't know if you've said, uh, you know, I, I, sh shaking hands. Now people are lifting hmm. their foot and tapping it. Hmm. Uh, that's that's too stupid for me. I you can't know, wait to go back to stroking your beard, Norm. Yeah. Like yeah. the first time I see Steve in person, I'm kissing him. That's all there is to it. Bring it. Yeah. Hey, yeah. He, he looks like enjoy that. I'll do right side. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. But yeah, I, like when this, I guess you'll probably see a ton of people out there. They're just mm. cooped up. They're tired. And maybe there's a lot of people that will weigh the risk, right? Mm. You know, they, they just want to get together. They want to be social again. And, uh, I don't know. I think the time, like I live, uh, there's a park that faces me and every weekend there's more and more people that are gathering out there and just wanting to socialize with people. So I think it'll happen. Yeah. We'll see. Well, one thing I'm going to hope for, and it sounds really bad. I'm hoping we don't reach episode 100 because I want to see everyone out of their houses. Mm. I want people to get back to normal. I want people to embrace each other. I want businesses to grow and I want people to be happy. So let's sign off here. Uh, Steve, best way to reach you. Uh, find me on the Internet. 
I'm uh, I exist, but uh, I can't make it easy for you because I get enough stuff already. <laughs> cool. Norm, where do they find your beard? Uh, my beard can be found at norm at amz dot club or any social network. Norm Ferrar. Sounds good. Uh, Tim, where do we find your uh, trousers or pants, as we call them <laughs> in the US? Yeah, yeah um, I'm all over the place. The best way to uh, to send me a message is actually my Facebook group, Private Label Legion. Excellent. Lee Van. Um, you can uh, find my Facebook profile while um, we'll be setting up a new site for the agency. So we'll have that ready to launch soon. But um, message me on Facebook. I pr pretty much answer every single person. Yeah. Right, unlike, true. unlike Steve, you know, I, unlike, yeah, that, unlike that's Steve. for sure. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, thank you, guys, gents, for joining. Thank you, guys, for listening and tuning in every day. I'll be back here at BST 4 p.m. tomorrow. Take care. See you soon. Bye. See you later. <laughs>